The Argyllan Sutherland Highlanders Museum is based in the King's Old Building in Stirling Castle, which is the highest point of the castle. Before the redevelopment, it was a relatively, what you would think of as your typical military museum. It was in a chronological format, it was a pretty dark, maybe uninviting place, and it was relatively inaccessible. Um, we were based on the first and second floors, so up a flight of pretty wobbly um, stone stairs, um, spiral stone stairs, to get to us. So that was immediately um, a cut-off point for people. And when people did come in, they were thrust into 1794, and they would often leave before they got any any further than the 1900s. So they would they wouldn't have a full concept of what the Argyles were and they wouldn't really get into their history um, and for that reason we felt actually big changes need to happen. So before the redevelopment our um, education programme was fairly straightforward, it was fairly basic and um, as part of the redevelopment we wanted to ensure that as many people engage with the museum as possible. Unfortunately our location is very is fairly inaccessible, we're at the top of a castle, uh, at the top of at the very top of the hill at a castle, there's lots of cobblestones, it's not the most accessible location. So one of the key drivers for our activity plan is to actually bring the museum outside the castle as much as possible. And that was important for accessibility, but also while the museum was closed, it meant that we could continue um, outreach work and to engage people with the museum, even when we didn't have a physical building for people to access. I think it was clear um, for anyone visiting that the museum was, although it was popular, it was past its best. Um, it was a bit outdated. We moved into this building in 1989 and nothing really changed in that time. And it was a combination of this, the change in audience and the removal of MOD funding in 2011 that really made our trustees stop and think, maybe the museum isn't going to be um, the, the sort of the museum in its current format isn't going to be workable for the future it's not going to be sustainable so as part of that the trustees initiated a series of feasibility studies to to see whether a, a redevelopment was the right way to go um, what could be done we are situated in a 15th century building and um, so we are really limited on the work that can be carried out and the big changes that can be made. Um, so it was really to try and figure out could the changes we want be made and if they could be, could they be done in the way we want to do them. Um, so there was an interpretation committee set up and a redevelopment committee set up um, and that was led by a project director who oversaw um, the, the full process um, which actually began in 2015 and is still kind of ongoing although the major redevelopment and building works have been completed we are still um, we're still working on the, the plans that we made as an offshoot of the, um, the the major redevelopment so our activity plan and our sort of forward plan for the next the next few years to try and see that we've got this this shiny new museum what can we do with it what how can we maintain the audience that we have? How can we grow our audience and provide something for communities like the, the veterans of the regiment and their families? So as part of the redevelopment, one of the things we were aiming for was a better relationship with historic Scotland. Well, not so much better, but a closer relationship. So as others may have said, we've got a partnership agreement in place now because the museum has always been part of the castle uh, format but it hasn't really been fully integrated and prior to the um, regiment leaving um, the castle was very much the in ownership almost of the regiment itself of the Argyles Museum so now that the Argyles as a functional regiment have moved out it's really historic Scotland that have full responsibility for running the castle. The biggest challenge of the redevelopment was working within a 15th century building, um, a 15th century scheduled monument, um, which meant that everything that needed to take place revolved around 
copious amounts of paperwork, um, even from the smallest uh, hole that you wanted to, to hammer into a wall, um, that, wasn't, that wasn't getting through easily. Um, and I think between that and there was a lot of groups um, involved. We worked in partnership with Historic Environment Scotland who um, care for the building um, and to make sure everything was to the highest standard um, of like current conservation um, standards, everything was looked at with a fine tooth comb and as a result that caused a lot of, a lot of delay and a lot of setback to what was already going to be a very ambitious timeline. Um, we closed to the public in August 2018 and we intended to reopen after major building work um, within nine months in June 2019. And I think at the time we all knew that was never going to happen. Um, so we were pushed back optimistically to December 2019 and then Easter 2020. And obviously we all know what happened um, prior to Easter 2020. And I think that's our second biggest challenge to the redevelopment is COVID, um, much like Everyone else, we suffered with that. That meant when the when lockdown restrictions were put in place, Stirling Castle closed. Our builders had to leave leave site and not come back for three four months. Um, the museum team itself, the the whole team were were furloughed. Um, so we had six months where we couldn't do any work, and that was a huge setback for us. So that when everything went back, we we came back to work there was a lot to catch up on um, and that was that I think that was definitely the hardest part and um, just trying to pick up where you were after six seven months away and everything absolutely changing. The challenges the museum face are in common with most charity organisations, most businesses, um, a combination of the Covid restrictions of um, Brexit um, but also um, we've been absent in a way for th almost three years, so we're now re, um, redeveloping relationships with schools. Having not been around for three years, school teachers have changed over and we're trying to re-establish ourselves as somewhere that they want to, to visit or somewhere that we can send items out for our outreach programme. Um, so of course when we didn't have a physical building it makes it makes life a lot dif more difficult. You need to find new and creative ways to try and interpret the collection without having a physical space. So to bring it outside into a different environment, to take it to libraries, to take it to schools, um, to take it to community events um, and all sorts of other locations. So it just gives us a chance to um, to bring the story out of the castle as much as possible and to engage with the people that really know who the Argyles are. Um, Stirling and the Argyles are quite synonymous. A lot of people that grew up in Stirling will know, know people that served in the Argyles and will be very um, proud of their, their local regiment and we wanted to tap into that um, sense of pride and try and get them to engage with our, um, with our redevelopment as much as possible and that was one of the key drivers of the activity plan while we were um, de uh, delivering it. <laughs> So the museum offers a vastly improved visitor experience now. Our spaces are lighter and brighter and they're much easier to, to move around. Um, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest changes that we made was to introduce a thematic approach rather than return to the chronological approach. So when visitors come to us, they, they don't need to have an interest in military history, they don't need to be connected to the regiment they can come in here and find something that appeals to them. Um, for example, in, in one room you can go from the world's oldest football medal to an outfit worn by the Queen to an action man. So we've got loads of variety that you don't necessarily associate with uh, a military museum and it's just sort of more obvious um, to our visitors now. One of the biggest benefits of the new museum has been the improved conditions that it's created for our collection. Um, so we have two new storage spaces um, and a new workroom which means that we can, we can work better, we can work more safely with our objects and each object has more space um, to, to breathe I suppose. Um, the conditions are less cramped um, and therefore it's, it's much better for the items in our care. And even within the displayed collection each item now has its own bespoke mount 
in each case. Um, so we know that once it's in there, it's got the absolute best, um, it's in the absolute best conditions that, that we would want for our item. So, there's, well, there's quite a few things I like about the museum. Um, I, I really love the fact that it's not done chronologically. So we don't start on day one of the Argyles and then work through to the modern day. There's a degree of that, a degree of chronology, but actually it's, it's built on sort of social structure and the values of the Argyles and also a Scottish regiment. So in fact, my favourite place in the museum is this room that we're in at the moment, which is the spirit of the Argyles. So it involves uh, the sort of royal patronage of the regiment, it involves the music, particularly the pipers that were a key part of the regiment in battle as well as in peacetime, and also some of the other aspects that relate to it, the fact it's a highland regiment. So they were very, um, a very close-knit community and they had a great reverence for the church and various other things. So I love the fact that the social aspects of the museum are really shown very well. So the, the items we have here are quite historic and have been part of some of the history's big events. So to actually be in the museum and explain these to people, it enriches their experience and I really enjoy it because they get a lot more out of it as well. And sometimes you get ex-Argyle soldiers who want to sort of come round and see the medals and things like that and you can show them that sort of thing. And also speaking to the other volunteers who are very knowledgeable and have actually served with the Argyles as part of their military serv service and they've got numerous stories to tell which I find really interesting. Having a brand new fancy museum that we can show off has really benefited the team because it's helped us show off the Argyles to the best in the best way we possibly can. It means that we have a brilliant base in which to show in which to do events, to um, do workshops, to engage with different with different groups as well. 